back to part three of the auxiliary series for how to make a home budget using Microsoft Excel. If you are joining us new, there should be links on your screen for the original series, episode one of the original budget series, or the first video of the auxiliary series regarding the loan amortization schedule. So what we're going to talk about now is uh, a minor change, this little box right here. I think I've explained enough how to create boxes. I don't think I need to detail this out for you. This is something else I've done. I've taken to using a credit card as well as a debit card now but for various reasons and so I keep track of my paying off of my credit card. Now I don't count that in my expenditure because I want to keep track of my expenditures individually. So if I spent five bucks at an Arby's and then ten bucks at a movie, and I have to pay off that $15 balance. I'm not going to just put $15 credit card because then I don't know what that $15 went to. So again, th these aren't numbers that have to go into any formatting or any formula. This just transaction number helps me keep track of what payments have been made, how much was made, and when they were made. So that's something that I added to mine. If you use credit cards and you think that would be beneficial, it's very simple. Now what we're going to do is something I had several comments about and a couple requests. I really appreciate the feedback that went into helping me discover this uh, much easier system. In the original system that I described, when you wanted to have your soft totals up here of how much you spent on groceries, you needed to oops, select the formula bar and then come down here and highlight additional figures. So if I made another purchase here, I would have to come up here, plus select the cell, and then press enter. It worked, but it certainly wasn't very efficient. So now what we're going to do is using, we're going to use the same principles we used here, the sum if function, and we're going to use them up here. So now if, when we make an expense toward groceries, all we have to do is select the drop-down menu, select groceries, and then it'll automatically populate it. So I'm going to show you how we do that. So using this system, um, we, have, we have four columns here in our original design. I'm going to change it down to three. I think it's the simplest way to make room for this additional category column. So just press merge cell and now these are separated into individual cells. Merge cell, unmerge cell, and then highlight those cells, format painter, and drag down. Now all of these are individual cells. Now take just the first cell, cell D, or excuse me, column D, if you have data in here at this time. If you want to do this on your next sheet, then you don't have to do this but I'm going to highlight the first cells of the data that I have populated in here, the, the text. Press Control X and then just highlight cell E and press Control Paste and now that moves over all my data. And now I am going to merge these cells back together. Format Paint down like that and then I want them left. And so you do lose a little bit of data there, but in my opinion, it doesn't need to be readily available. If you're concerned about more, if you want more information from that specific purchase, all you have to do is select the cell and all of the data is present up here in the formula bar. So we need to do the same thing here. Unmerge the cell, control exit, and then control V, move it on over. And now we want the cell to say category. Now we need to create the drop down list as you saw here. Here's your drop down list, we need to be able to create that. So just come to this box, while that box is selected, come up to data, click data validation, data validation. Under settings tab, drop down menu, click list. And now it's asking for a source. So now you've told it that you're going to populate this cell with a list. And now it's asking, well, where am I going to get this list? What is the list? Click in that cell, and then you're going to highlight 
all of your categories. Just click and drag all of the categories that you have at the top. And then press OK. And now you have this little arrow. And it's in the exact same order that it was presented up here. And then any, so in this case, this was a shirt. You probably want to put that under miscellaneous. Voila. And then just, you can just grab that bottom quarter and drag it down. And even now, like, so you notice it, it populated all of those with miscellaneous, but there, that list is still there for every single one of them. And if you don't want those, you can just select them and press delete. Now deleting the cell does not delete the list. So the list is still there. Now if you don't want to use the mouse to select these by hand, while you're filling this out, you know, if you type your name, the amount, your date, so you can press, you can hold the alt key and press on the down arrow on your keyboard. And I've let go of the alt key now. And now I can just up and down on my keyboard to go to the one I want. Press enter, press tab and move on over. So you don't have to use your mouse even to enter that data there. And then once that data is there, now, we're, now you have this all set up with this category column. And then just like we did here, we're gonna set up a sum if function. So no longer do we need these manual additions for the individual cells. We're going to have it equal sum if, open parentheses, the range that we're looking for the criteria is going to be the category cell or the category column. And again, I'm going to populate it. I'm going to drag it down to cell 200 because that's where I like it. Now you don't actually have to drag it all the way, you don't have to drag it all the way down to the bottom. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So under criteria, we want the criteria to be, in this case, the mortgage, because that's the cell we're populating right now, mortgage. So we only want money in here that's relative to mortgage payments. So criteria is, in quotations, mortgage, comma, and then the sum range we want column B. Now I'm just going to go like this. Now instead of having to click and drag it all the way down to the bottom, just come up here to the formula bar and change the ladder number to 200. So it's starting in column B, row 25, and ending in column B, and I, enter, I manually entered row 200. Close parentheses and press enter. Now I didn't I didn't populate these numbers correctly. I've got a mortgage on a groceries thing. I just did that so you could see how it works. Now you just click into the formula bar and copy control C and then press escape or exit. Click on the next one. Paste it. Now you don't even have to retype everything in. All you have to do now is come up and change this to car space pay period. Enter. And now it'll populate the data for car payments any data in here there the category says car payment it'll add that amount from the corresponding line to the car payment do that across the entire top and there you go you now have a system where you don't have to manually enter numbers up here at the top it is a fabulously easy system that has made expense tracking much easier I'm very glad that you viewers asked questions about it and made comments about it I don't think I ever would have come up with it on my own because I just I'm, I'm willing I was willing to do that um, thank you for commenting and asking questions I, again I invite you to do so on these videos as well that is it ladies and gentlemen that that those are the changes that I made to my personal budget sheet as well as answering questions that you had and concerns and comments that you had I hope again as always that this has been beneficial it is my goal that Life will be made a little bit easier for you as you try to struggle through this game that is making money. If anything didn't make sense, you're welcome to ask and I'll try to explain it more fully. Oh, and before I go, I need to make a plug for one of my other video series. If any of you are golfers and you enjoy keeping track of your statistics, I created a uh, golf statistics calculator. You enter in your, 
your day's worth of scores and it populates your averages uh, for that day as well as your career average um, using the same skills that we used in the budget films. It's really a handy thing if you just like keeping track of a lot of statistics kind of like I do. You'll find a link for it on the screen now as well as at the end of this video. Take care.